me if I could, uh, you know, copy this and send it to you. And so this is, I'm kind of excited because here's this Komodo dragon that he drew. And it's got flames coming out of its I'd mouth. I'd love to see that depiction. Me too. Thank you so much. For... So I'm going to do that through the Peru Library tomorrow. But he put names in here. I can tell you one thing. He did not care for MacArthur at all. <laughs> at, at all. Okay. All he would say about MacArthur was lineage. And so I did some surfing and found out that MacArthur had lineage. But also about this uh, this dragon and all this, my father would never go to see a movie that had dragons in it. Or giants? No, definitely. Get us uh, get us that picture. We'll be back in a moment with final phone calls with Stephen Quayle. I'm George Norrie. This is Coast to Coast AM. On our next Coast to Coast program, Bruce Lipton joins us. Uh, he's fascinating. We're going to talk about the biology of belief. That's on Coast to Coast AM. Stephen, uh, the book, Return of the Long Walkers, how do you get it? Well, they can call right now. It, it, it's actually being printed, okay? As we speak. As we speak. I just got a proofread. I, I, I turned that over to somebody that is a great proofer, one of Tom Horn's uh, people. And Tom will be uh, the uh, publisher, but I publish, as you know, I publish my own book. So you can get it by, and they can only call this number during the day, like from 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock. But they can call 719-547-9100, and it's called... Long Walkers, The Return of the Nephilim. Long Walkers, The Return of the Nephilim. And I'd also encourage, George, people to take advantage of, uh, well, I still have some copies left of Weather Wars. You know, the weather now, where it used to be the most boring thing you could talk about in days when it was so... Not uh, anymore. Not anymore. It's the topic. And, and I would encourage people, again, the number to call during normal hours, 8 o'clock in the morning, and that's mountain time. The 5 p.m. is 719-547-9100, 719-547-9100. That's where they can also order Holly Dale's book, Dare to Prepare. Very good. Let's go back to the phones international line. Brian in Toronto, you're on the air with us, Brian. Go ahead. Hi, George. Yeah, thanks. How you doing? Good. Can't believe I got through. I've been trying for a long time to talk to you. It's magic, Brian. It's amazing. Okay, go ahead. Uh, these giants that Stephen's been talking about, uh, what was their level of intelligence? Or if they were so intelligent or so smart, why aren't they wandering the earth now? Well, first of all, it's my contention that some of them are. And if they were so wonderful, they weren't wonderful, okay? They ate everybody in their uh, immediate vicinity. And, and tracking down the giants doesn't matter in the South Pacific, in South America, in uh, Russia, what's currently Russia, China, any of the ancient civilizations. They pretty much turned to cannibalism, and the Bible speaks specifically about even in the land of the giants, the land of Bashan, B-A-S-H-A-N, that uh, they, they, the land of our inhabitants, the, uh, even American or Native Americans in the United States, have stories about basically these things uh, eating people. So the point is, is that they were not benevolent, but as far as intelligence goes, you're talking about an intelligence, uh, I think George asked that earlier, you're talking about a supernatural element here of heaven meeting with earth and producing these offspring and the great uh, feats of architecture and a lot of the mathematics and as specific a lot of the weapons came out of their brilliance. This isn't just uh, you know guys that are, are walking around with giant clubs and making grunting noises. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Dan in Tennessee, first time caller. You're on with Stephen Quayle. Yes, yes. Uh... I've been listening to you for a long time, George. I used to listen to you when I lived down in Florida, ah, and okay. uh, now I've uh, found you here. Now that I live in Tennessee, um, I just—he had already answered a question. A, a caller had called earlier and asked, you know, what should a person do? Uh, you know, being that World War Three is intimate, and uh, I just wanted to see. He said, uh, you know, go ahead and get the book there to prepare. Um, I did notice, though, that uh, President Bush did sign a uh, contract with Greenland for a missile defense system, and Russia made the statement, uh, a public statement, saying, uh, you know, if they put in that missile defense system, that it's intimate that they will be fired upon. That's Poland, right? Or, yeah, Poland. Poland. I'm sorry. Yeah. And uh, then uh, I listen to Sylvia Brown sometimes, and uh, she had just made a statement that, uh, I guess it was a couple months ago. She said that mankind will not be on this earth in 90 years from now. 
Now the earth will still be here, but mankind itself will not be on the earth. So I just thought maybe your listeners would be interested in that. Okay. You want to react to that, Stephen? As you... Sure. I don't, I don't believe that because obviously, you know, from a biblical perspective that uh, Jesus comes back with a second coming and he sets up the millennial kingdom or the thousand years on earth. That's when the lion lays down with the lamb. A lot of people think we've already been through the millennium and I offer them a trip to Montana, expense paid. Uh, I'll let them go out in grizzly bear country and uh, soak them down with, uh, you know, uh, grease and see if that, that holds true. Seriously, George, the idea that, uh, that the, everything perishes on earth is kind of almost a Orwellian, uh, dream walk. Uh, there are people that believe that that would buy ideal as long as there were keepers that, you know, made sure everything went on. But those keepers are the people that want to take us down to 500 million and they'll do their best to take the majority of the world's population, 90%. And kill them off. They won't succeed because, again, that's a promise of God that all flesh is not destroyed because God literally steps into the scene to stop it. You know what, Stephen? I was watching Rudy Giuliani tonight before uh, Sarah Palin came on to speak. She did a good job, by the way. Uh, and he, he was talking about how we have gone into Iraq to, you know, to keep out Osama bin Laden and Al Qaeda. And you know what? I was watching the way he was just delivering that speech, saying Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda were not in Iraq when Saddam Hussein was there. They hated each other, but they weren't there. And, you know, how you can just blatantly say these things on, on the air like that and expect not to get challenged, I couldn't believe it. Well, I think he's pretty well become marginalized because obviously... Uh, he's not the man a lot of people think he is, in my opinion, and that's totally wrong. You know, so uh, I would be with you on that, George. I'd just be going, where are you coming from? It's it's not even timely and it's not even relevant. No, it, it, it's not. And uh, you know, yet, uh, you know, we continue to spend the kind of money we're spending where Americans are losing their jobs. This is going to be an interesting presidential race. Uh, I think it's going to come down to the haves and have-nots, and I think the have-nots were beginning to become most of the people in this country want change, and they're fed up. Well, they do, and, and you know, this is something interesting because uh, uh, the, the, the governor of Alaska is a real person. See, the, the problem with politicians is I don't know any group of people that, in general, are more rele- are more. Uh, uh, out of touch with the American public than most politicians. But what uh, the governor has done, Sarah has done, is she's brought a human factor to what I would say is a pretty much inhuman world. You know, i, I got to tell you something. When you hear her talk and you see what she's done in Alaska, she's a get-it-done lady. And the point is, is that I have more respect for her than who her running mate is. She uh, doesn't seem to be a politician and will freely admit she's not of that political uh, group. And, uh, you know, it's kind of refreshing to see to see someone different, someone who seems to be an American, who is more in touch with humans and people than uh, than everyone else. You know, it's, it's just going to be an interesting race now. Um, I thought Obama and Biden would have clobbered McCain a week ago, but after seeing her tonight, and if she can generate a little bit more publicity for herself, uh, it might be much closer than I thought it was going to be. Well, right, and I think the people that screwed this country up can't fix it. See, that's the professional political class. I, I, I put them in the same uh, category as Caligula and Nero. Oh, they're all scattering, aren't they? Yeah, and the thing is, is that you've got somebody that basically is a solution-oriented person, Plus, I like the fact, I mean, the quality of her life. Look, she doesn't run from her own personal family issues and, and, and making the decisions she 